Hallelujah. Minsan pa po pwede ba natin bigyan si Jesus ng mataas na papuri at pasasalamat? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alam niyo ba kung bakit tayo pwedeng mag-expect ng magagandang bagay? Why we can expect good things? It's because we serve a good God. Amen? Hallelujah. Alam niyo po, ang cornerstone ng lahat ng theology is that God is good. Amen? Uh, well, welcome to 3 p.m. service. Alam ko po na this is unholy hour. So pag medyo nakita niyo yung katabi niyo, medyo singkit. No? Binibigyan ko kayo ng karapatan para batukan. Huwag naman malakas. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sige po tayo po ay mag-pray muna. Lord, Holy Spirit, have your way. This is not my service. This is your service. And so, manal na Espiritu, hinihingi po namin ang inyong presensya sa aming kalagitnaan ngayong hapong ito. And we ask you, Lord, that you will do what only you can do. And that is to bring miracles, transformation, and breakthroughs. And we ask that in the name of Jesus. And all who agree will say, Amen. Amen. I suggest po kung hindi nyo pa napapanood or napapakinggan yung message ni Pastor Paul kaninang umaga, I suggest you listen to it. It's a very good message. As a matter of fact, it's very practical. And uh, one thing na nagmark po sa akin doon sa sinabi ni Pastor Paul is this. It's good to go to church. But what's even better is to belong to a church. Alam nyo po kung bakit? Kasi if you belong to a church... In that church, you'll find your purpose. At tutulungan ka ng church, tutulungan ka ng iglesia para yung purpose na yon ay masakatuparan sa yung buhay. That's what we do here. Alright? As a church, as a community, we help each other to fulfill our purpose. Doon sa message ni Pastor Cyrus, uh, last week, ang title ng message niya, tinawag bilang mga alagad, Sino po rito naniniwala na tinawag tayo ng Lord hindi lang para umupo dito sa church, though it is good na nandito tayo lahat. Alam niyo po, isa sa mga salita na pinangahawakan ko sinabi ni Pastor Jusel, yung word na mobilization. You see, if you're here, you have a purpose, may plan ng Lord sa buhay mo, and that is not just to sit inside here and wait for the rapture. <laughs> as glorious as rapture it is, the hope of the world is not in the rapture. I'll say that again. Yung pag-asa po ng mundo wala sa rapture. Bakit? Kasi pag nag-rapture, finish or not finish, pass your paper. The hope of the world is not in the rapture. The hope of the world is in the power of the gospel. If you're a believer, tinawag ka ng Lord para mag-preach ng gospel. Sino rito believer? Sino rito ang disciple ni Jesus? Yun, alam nyo po yung word na disciple, it means that you are a learner. The fact that you are here sitting, listening, it means that you're willing to learn. Hindi willing to sleep. <laughs> well, if you want a title for this message, ang title po ng mensahe is, Nag-aalab na buhay. A life on fire. A life on fire. Uh, Kakarating lang po namin two weeks ago from Singapore. Kasama po yung... Uh, last week, nag-shout out si Pastor Cyrus. Sabi niya, the best team daw yung Connect Team. Now it's my turn. I have the mic. Shout out to Kingdom Advanced Ministry. You're the best. <laughs> and umatend po kami ng School of Evangelism. Reinhard Bonke School of Evangelism. And we have learned so much. We have received so much. And we cannot wait to impart that to you. Alam niyo po, the evangelists, the prophets, the apostles, the pastors, the teachers, nag exist po itong uh, offices na to, to equip the whole church. Bakit? So that the whole church has a part to play. Amen. So gusto ko pong basahin dito yung Romans 8, verse 11. Romans 8, verse 11. 
kung naninirahan sa inyo ang Espiritu ng Diyos na siyang muling bumuhay kay Heso Kristo, siya ang muling bubuhay sa inyo mga katawang may kamatayan. Sa pamamagitan din ng kanyang Espiritong naninirahan sa inyo, at sa pamamagitan din ng Espiritong naninirahan sa inyo. Now, bigay, gusto po kayong bigyan ng context. Ang kausap po ni Paul dito ay mga taga-Rome, mga Romans. Yung mga Romans po, they are a combination of Jews and Gentiles. Kung babasahin po natin yung buong Romans 8, it talks about yung pong uh, mark ng isang anak ng Diyos ay ang banal na Espiritu. The mark of a son of God is the Holy Spirit. May nagtanong po kay Reinhard Bonke. Sabi niya, Reinhard, kilala niyo si Reinhard? Okay, Reinhard Bonnke is one of the uh, greatest evangelists who has ever lived. 79 million souls. Alright? May nagtanong sa kanya, Reinhard, how do you keep the fire of God burning in your life? Ang sabi ni Reinhard Bonnke, you got it all wrong. I can't keep the fire of God burning. It's the fire of God that is keeping me burning. And that fire, ladies and gentlemen, is no other than the Holy Spirit. And so, pag ikaw disciple ni Jesus, if you're a believer, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Alam niyo po sa Old Testament, the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, comes only upon a few selected people. And most of the time, it is tied up to an impossible assignment. In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. God Himself living inside a believer. How many of you know that changes the ball game? And so, that's the background of that. Alright, that's the context. Paul was encouraging the believers in Rome, listen guys, there's so much more to your salvation. I want to say this, salvation is just an entry point to the kingdom. Alright, I'll say it very carefully. Salvation is just an entry point to the kingdom. Why? Because once in the kingdom, there's so much more. Marami pa eh. And maraming believers, they miss out on the so much more. And listen to this. Please hear my heart because they're satisfied with good theology. Walang masama sa good theology. Walang masama sa right doctrine. In this church, one of our pillars is good theology and right doctrine. But when Jesus was talking to uh, these religious people, sabi ni Jesus, you search the scriptures for you think in them is eternal life. But they... The scriptures testify of me. You say, you know, good theology and right doctrine, it should lead us to an encounter with the person. And many of us, including me, sometimes we missed it because of our satisfaction of, with good theology. Sayang. Because there's so much more. God wants to use you for His kingdom. Gusto ang gamitin ng Panginoon para sa kanyang kalwalhatian. At yung apoy po na iyon na namumuhay sa atin isn't just... No, listen guys. I get it. The Holy Spirit is here to comfort us, to care for us, to encourage us. Pero hindi lang po yun eh. The Holy Spirit is there so that we can bring change to wherever we go. You're getting it? Yung banal na Espiritu hindi lang nandyan para i-comfort tayo. Yes, that's already a given. But there's so much more. And this afternoon, ito pong gusto kong pag-usapan natin. I've written here, tatlong lesson po na pwede natin makuha dito sa passage na binabanggit ni Paul sa Romans. And by the way, there are two 
may, meron po ako nakikita ng dalawang bagay kung bakit naging effective si Jesus sa kanyang ministry. Number one, He did no sin, He had no sin, in Him is no sin. And number two, He was completely empowered by the Holy Spirit. Sino po rito naniniwala yung number one criteria is already finished? Alright? Bas, marami, baka po sinasabi nyo, eh Brother Kiko, eh ako, kanina lang may nagawa akong kasalanan. Binayaran na po ni Jesus yon. So the first criteria is already done. Now, the second criteria is up to us. Ano po yun? How much do we want to be empowered by the person of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is not a doctrine. Hindi po siya theology. He's a person. A person that is meant to be encountered. Three lessons about the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. Number one, if you're writing down notes, pakisulat po ito, the Holy Spirit knows no impossibilities. Ang sabi po doon sa verse na binasa natin kanina, pwede pong pakibalik yung Romans 8 verse 11. Ang sabi doon, yung Espiritu ang bumuhay kay Heso Kristo. It's a spirit who raised Jesus from the dead. And if the spirit can raise someone from the dead, then baliwala sa kanya yung cancer. Baliwala sa kanya yung poverty. Baliwala sa kanya yung depression. I'm not taking it lightly, but you know, we're talking about God here. The Holy Spirit knows no impossibilities. Kagaya po nung binagit ko kanina sa Old Testament, every time na yung Holy Spirit would come upon a person, it is because meron pong impossible task na pinapagawa ang Panginoon. Nung sinabihan niya si Moses, Moses, I want you to bring my people out of Egypt, bring them to the promised land. Ano sabi ni Moses? Who am I? <laughs> na... Have you ever asked that question? Lord, sino ba naman ako para gamitin mo? Pero very interesting yung sagot ni Lord sa kanya. Ano yung sagot ni Lord? I will be with you. In other words, sabi ni Lord kay Moses, you're the person that I want to be with. Same thing he said to Joshua, I will be with you. Same thing he said to Gideon, I will be with you. Brother Kiko, Old Testament yan. Luke 4, 18, ano sabi ni Jesus, The Spirit of God is upon me, for He has anointed me to preach the gospel, to bring the recovery of the sight of the blind. Another impossible situation. Another impossible assignment. Acts 10, 38, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power as He went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Another impossible assignment. The Spirit of God, yung banal na Espiritu ay nananahan po sa atin. We have the Holy Spirit. Here's what I found out. God's presence, yung pong presensya ng Panginoon sa buhay natin, it requires something from us. The presence of God in our lives requires something from us. Ano po yun, Brother Kiko? It's that we invade the impossible. It's not just for the evangelist, not just for the pastor or the life group leader, para po ito sa lahat ng naniniwala Okay, Jesus. Mark 16, verse 17, and these signs will follow the believers. Any believers in the house? Sino rito ready na ma-equip? Sino rito gustong gamitin ng Lord para magpagaling ng may sakit? Sino rito gustong gamitin ng Lord para bumuhay ng patay? Sino rito gustong gamitin ng Lord para mag-preach ng gospel? We are not exempted. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, you are not exempted. Yeah. 
something is always expected from us when God is revealed to be with us. Yun yun eh. When God is revealing something na kasama mo ako palagi, it requires something from us. And what is that? It's co-laboring. You see, working or serving the Lord is not working for the Lord. Serving the Lord is working with the Lord. You have the Spirit of God. Nasa iyo yung banal na Espiritu. Again, ulitin ko yung sinabi ni Pastor Cyrus last week. Hindi po tayo tinawag para lang umupo at magantay ng rapture. Tandaan niyo po yung word na mobilization. This year is going to be a beginning of something that is so glorious. I believe that with all of my heart. Naalala niyo po si Jesus when He was baptized on water doon po sa Mark, sa Gospel ni Mark. The Spirit of God descended upon Him in the form of a dove. Ama? Even before gumawa siya sa ministry, nagpagaling siya ng may sakit, nagpreach siya, nagturo siya, the Holy Spirit first came upon him. And then, he started his ministry. Doon po sa gospel ni John, mayroong inad na phrase. It says, and the Spirit of God remained on him. Now, the Spirit of God is living inside of us. Ito po yung gusto kong makuha natin this afternoon. That we get to realize the importance of yung banal na Espiritu ng Diyos na nananahan sa buhay natin. The Spirit of God living inside of us. If there's, if there's something that I want you to catch, it's, ito po yun. God Himself living inside of you. Second lesson. Pakibalik po yung verse. Second lesson is this. The Holy Spirit lives in me now. Sabi po dito, kung naninirahan sa inyo ang Espiritu ng Diyos na siyang muling bumuhay kay Heso Kristo. Sino po dito naniniwala the Holy Spirit cannot live in a man-made tabernacle. You are chosen. You are His people. We are His people. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Do you not know that you are the temple of God? 2 Corinthians 3.17 Now the Lord is the Spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is Freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Nasaan ba ang Holy Spirit? Nasa inyo, nasa atin. And so wherever we go, we bring freedom. Freedom from what? Sakit, depression. You know when a believer enters a hospital room, pag sinabi ng doktor na this guy has 24 hours to live, to live, the moment na pumasok ang isang believer sa kwarto na yon, the odds are changed. Why? Because the Spirit of God is living in you. And where the Spirit of God is, there is freedom. Whenever you share or you encourage a person who's going through a lot, how many of you know you're bringing freedom to that person? That's what the Spirit of God can do in a life of a believer. Since the Holy Spirit dwells in you, it means kung saan tayo pumunta, may freedom. Hallelujah. We have to realize that we carry something so powerful. Wala pong mini version ng Holy Spirit. Yo lagi nyo maririnig sa akin to, there is no junior Holy Spirit. 
the same Holy Spirit that empowered Jesus is the same Holy Spirit that lives in Pastor Paul, same Holy Spirit that is living in Pastor Jusel, is the same Holy Spirit that you and I have. No miniature version. Eh kasi, Brother Kiko, yung, yung Holy Spirit ni Pastor Jusel, Holy Spirit! Yung Holy Spirit na nasa akin, Holy Spirit lang. No miniature version. The same Holy Spirit. I have a question for you. Who is more powerful? Yung Holy Spirit na nakay Jesus o yung Holy Spirit na nasa inyo? What? It's the same. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me say it in a different way. Which is more powerful? The Word of God in the mouth of Jesus or the Word of God in your mouth? Kanina, bilis natin, the same. <laughs> the, word, the Word of God is powerful. It's the same. John 6, John 6, 63, and sabi ni Jesus, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Sino ba si Jesus? Jesus is the Word made flesh. But every time He spoke, the words become spirit. Do you know that every time you are speaking the Word of God, those words are being carried by the same spirit and it will bring life. Hallelujah. Sino po rito naniniwala? Jesus is 100% perfectly God. And sino po rito naniniwala when Jesus operated on earth, He did it as a man. Doon po sa John 14 verse 12, sabi ni Jesus, Most assuredly, I say to you, the things that I did, you will also do, and greater things than this, you will also do. <laughs> Kung ginawa ni Jesus yung mga miracles na yon as a man or as a God, siguro I would just stand on the side and applaud Him. God, do it some more. Do it again. Do it again. But if I realized na ginawa ni Jesus yun, not as a God, but as a man submitted to the Holy Spirit, then something is being burned in my heart. Because I want to do, I am compelled to do the same. I am encouraged to do the same. It's not my word. See, Jesus and nagsabing on greater things than this, you will do. Why? Because I go to the Father, and when I go to the Father, I send you the helper. The Holy Spirit lives in me, lives in you today. Now. Ano pong ating... I want to share a, a, a testimony. Yung pong ating art exhibit. Sino rito nakapunta doon sa art exhibit sa ATC? Alright? So it, was a, it was a great opportunity to share the love of God. A lot of people came to Jesus because of that exhibit. And uh, nandun po kami kasama yung team. I think we were assigned Sunday. <clears throat> Meron pong group of people na we were, you know, getting to know them. Getting, trying to connect with those people. Walu po sila. These eight people, they were unbelievers. And uh, so we were sharing the gospel. Sabi ko sa kanila, tinanong ko, sa, tinanong ko sila, sino, sino sa inyo may sakit? Siguro mga four out of eight nagtas ng kamay. Sabi ko sa kanila, alam nyo ba na gusto kayong pagalingin ni Jesus? 
mahal kayo ni Jesus at gustong patunayan ni Jesus yung pagmamahal na yon sa pamamagitan ng pagpapagaling sa inyo. But here's the catch, sabi ko sa kanila, hindi ako ang magpe-pray sa inyo. Kayo ang magpe-pray sa bawat isa. But before that, I want you to do something. I want you to believe in Him, accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Kasi ang sabi sa Bible, you will lay your hands on the sick and you will recover. Pero yun po ay panawagan para sa isang believer. So sabi ko sa kanila, sino rito gusto niyong uh, tanggapin si Jesus bilang Panginoon at tagapagligtas? Tas sila ng kamay. So we, we, we believed in Jesus, we prayed the prayer, inaccept nila si Jesus bilang kanilang Panginoon at tagapagligtas. Sabi ko, okay, game. Kuha ka ng partner. Yung apat na nagtas ng kamay, puntahan nyo, patungan ng kamay, and just speak to the problem. And so, after namin mag-pray, taas sila ng kamay. Sabi ko, sino yung gumaling? Yung tatlo nagtas ng kamay. Sabi ko, ikaw ano na nangyari sa'yo? Sabi ko, sabi ko dun sa isang babae. Sabi ng babae, ah, kasi po, two years po ako straight dinudugo. Hindi ko po malalaman kung gumaling ako ngayon. Pagdating ko na lang po sa bahay. Alam niyo po, pag uwi ng babae sa bahay, nag-text po sa akin. Sabi niya sa akin, the bleeding stop! Sinong nagpray? Yung leader ba? Yung pastor ba? Yung evangelist ba? Sinong nagpray? Baby Christian po yung nagpray. Bakit? Kasi walang miniature version ng Holy Spirit. Yun po ang kailangan ma-realize natin. It's the same Holy Spirit. Number three, third lesson. Sabi po dun sa verse na binasa natin kanina, ang banal na Espiritu ang magbibigay na buhay sa ating mga katawan. Third lesson, the Holy Spirit is the source of life. John 7, verse 38. He who believes in me, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. Hindi po river, but rivers. Alam niyo po yung river. A river is vibrant. It's full of life. And the Holy Spirit in the Bible is described as a river. Not a lake. So ibig sabihin, hindi siya stagnant. The Holy Spirit in you is a river. Ibig sabihin, He wants to flow. He wants to touch people. The Holy Spirit is a river. John 10.10, 10, alam po natin itong verse na to. The enemy came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Pero sabi ni Jesus, I came to give you life. John 6.63, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Holy Spirit is the source of life. There was this evangelist sa Lagos, Nigeria. He's about to preach sa isa pong malaking cathedral. It would fit around 10,000 people. Youth conference, mag, mag, magpipreach po tong evangelist na to. So nagpakalat ng flyers, yung uh, mga organizers nung event. Alright? Apparently, meron pong isang uh, babae who just lost her husband because of a car accident. But here's the catch. Yung pong husband niya, tatlong araw ng patay. Nasa mortuary na. As a matter of fact, naimbalsa mo na. But this woman, sabi niya, wait, this, this evangelist will come. I will bring my husband. <laughs> so may formalin na yon. Siyempre, may gamot na para hindi mga moy. <laughs> diba? So dinala nila through an ambulance yung kabaong. Doon sa cathedral, kung saan magpipreach itong well-known evangelist na to. 
Pagdating po doon, hinarang sila ng police just to make sure walang explosive or something doon sa kabaong. Pagkita nung mga police na patay na, patay talaga, pinayagan nila. Pero pagdating po doon sa katedral, hindi pinayagan ng mga organizers na makapasok sa loob ng youth conference yung kabaong kasi baka daw matakot yung mga young people. So sabi ng organizers, ganito na lang, tanggalin nyo yung bangkay doon sa kabaong at dalin nyo doon sa basement. For example, ito yung katedral, nasa basement yung patay. Now yung evangelist po, nag-preach. Nag-preach siya ng gospel. Nag-preach siya ng word ni Lord. After niya mag-preach, he prayed a simple prayer. Alam niyo po yung patay. Tatlong araw ng patay. And this is documented. Yung patay na matigas, na imbalsa mo, all of a sudden biglang, <gasps> Pwede niyong palakpakan si Jesus. But here's the, here's the thing. Nung in-interview po yung evangelist, sabi niya, eh, hindi ko nga alam na may patay. But this is what he said. It is the gospel that is the power of God and to salvation. And every time, listen to this church, every time the word of God is proclaimed. Life is released into the atmosphere. Any dead situation in your life can be resurrected because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Imagine, <laughs> di pa ako nakakita ng ganun. Tatlong araw, patay. I've watched, napanood ko yung video eh. I've watched the video, it's in, it's in YouTube. And by the way, yung pong evangelist na yun is no other than Reinhard Bonnke. Nung nasa Singapore po kami, pinanood namin yung mga videos niya ng preaching. Video lang po. We're watching video, but you can feel the power hitting you while watching the video. The Holy Spirit is the source of life. Alam niyo po, naniniwala ako ngayong hapon, God wants to set people free. Do you believe that? Niniwala po kung ngayong hapon, maraming gustong pagalingin si Lord. I believe this, this afternoon, maraming gustong palayain si Lord. Maraming gusto si Lord na addiction na basagin. Question is, are we willing to surrender. Gusto ba natin magpagamit kay Lord? Gusto ba natin yung buhay natin? It's a life that is on fire. When I invited Pastor Josel dun po sa aming conference before sa Subic 2018, sabi ni Pastor Josel, yung daw taong on fire, hindi mo makikitang nakatayo lang sa isang tabi. Yung isang taong nasusunog, <laughs> tumatakbo yan, di ba? A person who's, who's on fire is gonna run. Kapatid, God wants to use you for His kingdom, for His glory. Do you want the fire of God? Do you want the fire of God that keeps you burning? 
So we're going to pray. Tayo po tayong lahat. Alam niyo po, pag dumating yung fire, it purifies. Yung pong mga imperfections, magsusurface out yan when the fire of God comes. Just like sa gold. When you put gold into fire, yung pong mga imperfections, mga impurities, lumalabas lahat yan. I believe this afternoon, God is about to purify each and every one of us. God is not looking for perfect people. If that's the case, then <laughs> hindi tayo lahat pwede. <laughs> you know what He's looking for? He's looking for yielded vessels. Every hands, please lift them high. Holy Spirit, Precious Lord, please come. Touch every person here. Touch every person right now. Mark them. Mark us with your presence. And at the count of three, ito pong gusto kong gawin natin. At the, the count of three, we will shout hallelujah. And I want you to shout with all your might. And I believe as we shout, the power of God will come Yung pong may, may mga sakit, I believe God will touch you. At the count of three. One, two, three. Hallelujah! Hey! Woo! Rabashaka tarabayane! Woo! Fire! Come, Lord, come. Come, Holy Spirit. There's someone here, you have a problem in your uh, esophagus. Alright? Parang may nakabara. I don't know who's that person. If you're that person, please raise your hand. God is touching you. God is healing you, sir. God is healing you right now. If, if you're standing next to that person, put your hand on that person. All right? There's someone here, you have a severe tooth infection. It's, it's, it's causing you so much pain. God is touching you. Who is that? God is touching you. Tooth infection. God is healing you right now. Severe tooth infection that's causing you migraine. In the name of Jesus, I cancel that. God is healing people with asthma. Asthma. In the name of Jesus, that will go out right now in Jesus' name. 
In Jesus' name. God is healing people with sinus infections. Tinnitus is going in the name of Jesus. There's that, that, that ringing in the ear. Pinapagaling ni Lord ngayon. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Anybody here, you have a cyst or a tumor in your body. If you're that person, please raise your hand. Cyst or tumor. If you're standing next to that person, patungan mo ng kamay. If you're a believer, you're standing next to right to that person, patungan ng kamay. In Jesus' name, we command that cyst, we command that tumor to dissolve right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Tumor, we command you to dissolve. In the mighty name of Jesus, we command you, out you go. Out you go. Blood infection, blood disorder. Sino po dito? Blood disorder. May problema sa dugo. Probably leukemia or an autoimmune disease. God is healing you right now. Maybe lupus. God is healing you. God is touching you. Jesus name. Jesus name. Lord, salamat sa yung banal na espiritu. Salamat sa kapangyarihan mo para magpagaling, magpalaya. Someone here constantly nagkakaroon ka ng nightmares. You know, parang there are times ayaw mo nang Matulog. Today is your day. Today is your day. It goes right now. In Jesus' name. I'm breaking it in Jesus' name. That oppression in your life, I break it in the name of Jesus. Someone who has a problem with arthritis, all right, it's giving you a hard time with your mobility. I see a hand at the back. Arthritis. All right, God is touching. If you're standing right next to that person, pakipatungan po ng kamay. That pain goes now in Jesus' name. Every pain I command you, go in the name of Jesus. Healing is flowing now in the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for what you just did. It's not about me. It's not about us. It's all about you, Lord. It's about your presence. It's about your Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. In Jesus' name. And everybody will say, Amen and Amen.